So here we are at the Tour de France 2023, ready to check out all the latest bike tech, in particular the bike GPS computers and power meters and whatever the cool bike componentry that I see on there that looks pretty nifty with some sort of chipset in there. Now, while a lot of this does tend to be driven by sponsors, the reality is there's actually quite a bit of leeway that the riders have in choosing the exact models and gear within that line. And that's a piece that we found quite a bit of interesting tidbits on in past years, and I'm here to kind of like ferret all those little details out. PC Rainmaker. How are you doing? I like your content, man. Ah, appreciate it, thanks. Yeah. Now, waiting for all the team vehicles coming in. Right now, this is actually the caravan. This is the crazy publicity caravan, and they're basically the headliner sponsors of the tour. They throw out usually goodies over the course of the entire route. Anyways, here comes the team vehicles. I'm gonna go ahead and throw my mask on and get things rolling. So the way it all works is that the caravan took up this spot today, and the team vehicles come in about two hours or so before the race starts, or about two hours right now until it starts. Okay, here we are at Lotto Destiny's bikes, and lots of interesting things to look at. But the first is actually a non-tech thing. Well, it could be a tech thing, but it's not. Here we are in the day and age of plenty of bike computers that can tell you when taking nutrition. But in this case, they've gone with basically little paper sheets. And what's cool is that each one of these sheets is different for each rider. So if I look at all the different bikes, they're actually slightly different. I'll put them on the screen right now there. That uh, looks like Precision Hydration products. I presume they're sponsored by them. Yep, you can see it right up there. But again, it's always kind of fun to see that despite all the tech available, riders just trust paper. And the same is true as well for the small little sheets that you see on top of the handlebars. You'll see this on many, many different teams showing the different stage components, all this is there. Now, in terms of the power meters here, they are using a blend of 4Eyes and Shimano. So you can see the 4Eyes units uh, just right there on that side. Uh, but there's also some bikes here with Shimano power meters. Looks like R9100s, R9200s. Uh, I only see actually a couple with the 4Eyes on there. Not sure why they are a 4Eyes sponsored team, but they're also a Shimano sponsored team. And I mean, honestly, if it was me, I'd be sticking with the 4Eyes ones, but hey, you do you. Let's pop into the trackers right now. So those are the small rider trackers you can see on the back of every single bike, they're snapping them in place, basically a little holder there. Uh, and this is what they look like up here. And each of these trackers basically corresponds to the rider's location. And that's where you can see the data during the race about where those riders are uh, and their location in the overall field. So you can see here on the front of one of the riders of Movistar is a GoPro uh, Hero Session, like a really old school Hero Session uh, mount. That is for the VLON camera. So VLON puts cameras on riders. In this case, they're putting on a ride number 138. I'll drop the name down at the bottom there. Uh, but it is. Kind of amazing to still see the GoPro session work in the Tour de France. That's amazing. Still yeah. rocking the sessions. <laughs> yeah. But it's, it's session five. Actually. Yeah, yeah. It's not, we used to use the four. How come not the newer, like um, the smaller ones, like the mini? Well, we haven't tried them yet, mm -hmm. but I'm guessing they're a bit heavier. Okay. Let's see. Gotcha. Actually, those are the ASO guys and not the VLON guys. Uh, they're putting eight cameras out there today, all Hero Session 5s. I asked why not something like the minis, which is the new Hero 11 mini uh, black. Uh, and they said basically the weight. They haven't really tested them too much, but they said the weight was the main thing. And it is the Hero 11 Mini is a chunkier camera, so I can't exactly blame them. Now, pretty cool to see one of the riders has left their unit here, a turn on. In fact, you can actually see the Tour de France 2023 Stage 1 loaded up, ready to go on their Garmin Edge device. They'll obviously tap that once they get to, to the start line there, and then have all the turns and everything coming up for the entire race, climb pro and all that kind of stuff. It's always hilarious to see the last minute things that occur here, in this case, applying decals to the rotor uh chain rings there last minute thing popping in uh team intermarche is one of the ones that is on rotor in spider power meter so you can see that down there how many cameras are you putting on today uh in total it's 18. 18 okay thankfully i only, I only have to do four so i have a nice <laughs> easy job today yep all hero eights in sessions or uh yeah for the on bike it's all of these and then in yep. the power it's the new bills. gotcha in the sessions just because of the smallest basically yeah, yeah. And the riders and like, control them themselves or no they're all on a timer so okay we before the stage we pick what time we want them to on yep scan a barcode and then they turn on automatically and i think if I, if I was to leave it up to the riders to turn it on then we'd have no footage they're using what are presumed to be gopro's power tools or qr code scanners they basically set an exact time the camera will turn on to start recording uh, and then just captures until it's done it's a pretty clever way of dealing with it. As you may have been able to hear him say, if he left it up to the riders, they probably wouldn't actually get any footage. And they used to leave it up to the riders years ago, but I guess not anymore. <laughs> the secret passage to getting past all the bikes into some other place, straight down this little channel right here. This is thankfully one of the more compact arrangements uh, for a tour stage start. Sometimes the wandering around is just massive, uh, spread over a huge, huge, long straight area, but in this case, it's kind of like a little T. So using one of the small mini pumps there to go ahead and get the uh, tire pressure up to exact amount. It does have a small LCD display on the side of them or the top of them. Uh, you can go ahead and basically just set it to go to that given value. Now, some of the riders are heading up already. You can see Team DSM here. Uh, they're running Shimano 9200 
uh, P power meters, and then they've also got the Wahoo Bolt V2 on it. So what's happening now is our riders are going from the team vans and team vehicles briefly up to the stage there to go ahead and sign in. Uh, it's a bit of a combination, like presentation sign in because of the first stage here. Uh, but they head up there, they do have to physically sign in for the day, otherwise they're not considered a starter. Uh, trolleys of the famed KOM jersey and hats are going out there. It's always a crowd favorite. So here you can see Team Total Energies. In this case, they got Shimano R9200P power meters on there, but they also got an assortment of Garmin head units. They are a Garmin sponsored team. Uh, so you see an Edge 1040 Solar, an Edge 840 Solar, uh, an Edge 530. Here we got uh, Intermarche heading up right now, up to uh, the sign in there. We got the Brighton units on the head unit there, another Brighton unit there. They're a Brighton sponsored team. Uh, and you can see also there's that uh, session hero session camera shot earlier on either for aso or vlon anyways back on to tell energies generally speaking the riders can go ahead and choose which model they want uh, and so in the case of the edge 540 840 those just came out a couple months ago most teams are pretty hesitant to try brand new technology uh this late in the season usually that comes out like in the December, January time frame along with their team camps. But again, it is up to the rider to choose what they want to put on their handlebars. Meanwhile, here at Group FHJ, every single rider has the Edge 830 on it. So uh, going with that, probably a team decision there. Ajay Duar going with the Rome V2 models right there. Heading on out to get signed in. And this is when things get busy. we got basically an hour until start. Uh, and the riders are trying to get up there to go ahead and get signed in. Kind of a bit of a crowd of mess crossing one crossing there. And of course, having to navigate this entire scene. Team Cars and Bicycles playing the giant game of Tetris right now, trying to get ready for the start. Uh, they basically get some team vehicle staged ahead of the riders, uh, and then some team vehicle staged right behind them, and then some will basically skip ahead for feed zones and things like that. And then once all that's done, those team buses got to go ahead and skip ahead as well uh, to the end, the end of the stage. In this case, it's actually pretty easy. It's just across town. They basically make a giant loop today. Uh, but in most cases, it's far more complex, and they have to go far, far away. You can see here at Team Jacob, R9200P power meters. Got there an Edge 530, an Edge 1040, Solar, uh, an Edge 530 as well. Four hands grow guys going down there with the Wahoo sponsor team. So basically they've got Wahoo Volt V2s and Rome V2s heading on down. The Lidl folks literally have a fruit stand at their team vehicle. That's uh, that's brand messaging on point. Looking at their power meters though, they've got SRAM uh, power meters. So you can see the Quark units right there. Uh, access. Here we are, Team Inuos, and you can see the Shimano power meter. On the bike computer side, they've got all the latest Garmin gear because they are a Garmin sponsored team. So they've got the Edge 1040 Solar. They've got, looks like, some 840 Solars in there. Maybe a 540 Solar, but it looks like 840 Solars across the board. It's a bit hard to see uh, when you're uh, from a few feet away. And Inuos has a long history of like blocking things off and making it more difficult to see. So, yeah, it is what it is. Here we are at Aja Duar, and you can see that it's got the uh, Power to Max NG on there. And then up on the handlebars, uh, one of the riders has the Wahoo Rome V2. The other riders haven't put their uh, units on yet. As I said before, I think I said before at this point, uh, generally speaking, the riders hold on to their bike computers inside the team vans where they're all hunkered down right now, and then they bring them back out again. Some of them leave outside, just it depends a little bit on the team, but I would say like 80% of the time they are inside with the riders. Here goes one of the Team Bahrain riders right now after checking in. He's got an Edge 130 on there. Look at that. So again, because of the fact that Team Bahrain uh, is not sponsored by Garmin, they're just picking and choosing things uh, themselves. In this case, you've got the Edge 130, you've got a 540 up there, sorry, 530 up there, you've got an 830 up there. I don't see any 1040s, you see mostly just 830s floating around. Here are Team Israel Premier Tech, and they've got the Camera Head Karoo uh, 2 on. It's an FSA power meter, but it's technically basically a power to max. So the FSA power box is a power to max uh, behind the scenes. Now here at Team Education First, it is absolutely hopping so much so that my mics were basically slaughtered. So here is the Wahoo Bolt V2. They've also got the Rome V2 as well. They're a Wahoo sponsored team. They're also a power to max sponsored team. You can see that there. Everything's all kitted out in pink custom label. That's just like their thing in life. They always do it. Now this is a bit of an end of the era for a power meter geeks. Uh, this is the last team running SRM power meter, and even that isn't entirely true. If I look at the list of companies that have sponsored uh, Team Kofidis, SRM is not up there. And in fact, some of the guys are running stages power meters, uh, both left only as well as dual sided ones. So that's it. To go from being what used to be called the gold standard power meter down to just a couple bikes left on a team without any sponsorship at all is is quite a fall from grace. Now, of course, keep in mind, as always, sponsorships does not imply that it's a good product. Uh, we see that with the Shimano power meters, for example, that have been widely proven to be very inaccurate, 
Yeah, they are on, I don't know, probably half of the bikes here. Due to Shimano drivetrain sponsorships and component sponsorships cost different amounts. Uh, something like a drivetrain costs a heck of a lot more than, you know, like the training platform that might, you might use behind the scenes. Uh, and then something like trainers or whatnot. You know, you're looking at probably 100 to 130,000 for a lower tier component uh, for the season. There we go. We know we're getting close now. You can see the helicopter uh, generally means we're getting close to start. The riders are starting to make their way up to the starting area get going here i'm gonna head on that way as well the road is finally a bit more clear they close things out riders stopping and chatting with uh usually friends and family at this point uh if they were friends and family they're gonna be inside this area here uh versus you know outside can be fans and one thing to keep in mind is that you know while you may know a few of the riders names the reality is that a lot of them are not household names and for them being the tour de france is a huge thing like it's the the pinnacle of their entire career especially the first one uh, and have the friends and family back over and be here at the start is a massive deal. Uh, it may not seem it to, you know, the guys like Cavendish and so on, but, but for the guys that are just here for their first tour and have the friends and family here checking it out, stopping to say hi there is a pretty cool thing. You now here at Team Gumbo Vismo, they've got SRAM uh, four pyrometers on there and they've got basically uh, a blend of different Garmin head units. Now, in case you're wondering what GPS computer Cav is wearing, he's got a Garmin Edge 840 Solar on there. He had it in his pocket or hidden away until the very last second and pulled it out right there in the starting corral. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw all of the different bike computers and pyrometers up on the screen now so you can check those out. And with that, the stage is ready to start. And for that, you can of course watch that on TV, uh, but uh, stay tuned for plenty more sports tech goodness from the tour. With that, have a good one.